welcome back to my channel and today is day 11 of the Kramas series. Now tonight I will be reading a story from Reddit No Sleep, of course, but within the up next upcoming weeks we will be doing something different and having more adventure and everything like that, bringing new vibes to this channel. And as you can see I changed my background from the dark red to a more homey, a lit candle. But I wanted something more comforting for my channel for the Crema series, even though I waited until now. But anyways, something big and a huge surprise I have coming for you guys. And I can't wait to show you guys and use it. And I won't give too much away. But here locally and certain places that I know of, certain towns and everything. There's a lot of haunted places that are accessible. There's even roads that are haunted apparently here in Tuscaloosa, but I wanna do more stuff like I did in Capitol Park where I go to places and I actually try and communicate with the spirits. Now I know I said I would never communicate with spirits, but now that I know more and educated myself more on how to put a big block between yourself and the spirits I feel more comfortable and as in my recent video I showed you guys of the good stuff that I carry for protection from negative energies and all that stuff so I'm more confident more comfortable and more knowledgeable on how to do that without being in danger but for a couple of days I will do reddit no sleep stories but to be honest, I want more excitement. So I can't wait to go on an, on an adventure with you guys and have more adventures, kind of like Capitol Park, like I said. But yeah, so let's get started on this story on Reddit and no sleep. Mommy, he won't look away. My daughter, Avery, had always had nightmares. She would frequently join me and my husband Tyler in our bed out of fear. However, she would always eventually calm down, return to her room, and go back to sleep. Tonight was different. I awoke suddenly, seeing my daughter's face leaning over mine, her eyes wide, expression panicked. What happened? I asked. Sitting up and pulling Avery into my lap, she didn't respond. Rather, she started to quietly weep. Having Heaving the occasional breath, she tightly hugged me, her arms wrapped around my neck as she cried into my shoulder, I put my hands on her back, patting her in a comforting manner. Tyler, wake up, I said lightly, hitting his shin with my foot, starting to rock Avery back and forth. He awoke with a jolt, clearly unhappy to have been woken up so early. Raylene, it's too early. He paused upon looking at Avery. What happened? Avery, honey, are you okay? Was it another nightmare? He quickly sat up and scooted over against me, brushing some tears off of Avery's cheek. Avery sniffled and inhaled sharply. The, the man will stop looking at me. She muttered into my shoulder. Make him look away. Tyler looked at me. Probably another nightmare. Come on, Avery, let's go. He picked up Avery and started walking into her room down the hall. She started screaming and thrashing about. Raylene, come help with this, he yelled, groaning when Avery accidentally kicked him in the stomach. I bolted out of bed and grabbed her out of his arms, holding her like you would a baby, despite her being five years old. I tried to shush her while me and Tyler panically bickered over what to do. Suddenly, we heard a loud thump, which silenced all three of us. Him, I heard Avery quietly choke out. Tyler shot a nervous glance at me. I walked over to him, placing Avery in his arms. I slowly walked to Avery's door, my hand lingering on the doorknob. Raylene, don't. I'll call the cops to come check it out instead, Tyler begged. I ignored his warning and slowly opened the door, getting hit by the smell of death. My eyes watered, but I grew rigid upon hearing my daughter say something. Mommy, he won't look away. Mommy, no. I shakily turned the lights on. 
Seeing the closet about five inches open, I grabbed a book from a small bookshelf and walked towards the closet. The smell got worse and worse the closer I got. I flung the door open and couldn't believe what I was looking at. There was a newly dead man laying on the floor. His pale blue eyes looked out of where the crack in the door would have been, illuminated by a nightlight. But even worse, I had seen this man before. I had seen him in pictures, family pictures to be exact. He was my great-grandfather. The most unsettling part of all this is that he died 54 years ago in a different country halfway across the world. Um, well, that was weird and unsettling. Um, have you ever heard of time travelers? There's actually some pictures that are interesting. History. Um, pictures from historical moments and everything. And you can see someone in the background with like today's clothing in like the 1800s or something. Like, so that's interesting. That's my theory. Um, I'm going to follow that post and see if there is a part two. But I guess we'll see in a couple of days, maybe tomorrow. Some people do updates the next day. Some people take a couple of days, I guess, to think of an update, but that sounded like the ending. So let me know what you guys think. And let me know how excited you are of the new stuff coming. Cause I know I am, so I may have to brag a little bit, but we will be doing a video first it's kind of simple but exciting and then we'll go off but between now and then i'm actually going to give historical stories of haunted places locally in alabama i'll even do some historical haunted stories outside of alabama but i want to start with the places that i want to visit even places that i can't visit um such as like I did on the old Bryce Hospital. But I want to do more stories of that too, of local hauntings um, and historical places. So I guess excitement is coming soon, that's for sure. So I guess I'll quit my rambling and like, comment, and subscribe.